every once in a while things just don't go our way here on test drive and this week is a prime example of it i had originally booked this 2024 jaguar f-type convertible r75 for the middle of may perfect weather to be testing a convertible except this isn't may is it this is the end of march and you know, i figured okay it's not too bad to have this car as it's the the last press vehicle going out before its retirement except we've had the worst weather i think we've had in forever really I mean, we've had snow, we've had wind, we've had below zero temperatures all week. Just not fun weather to be testing a convertible. But here we are finally on the last day I've got this car. We do have some sun. There isn't much wind. It is cold, but that's fine. We're going top down with this vehicle. Now, James just featured the F-Type Coupe a couple weeks ago. So if you want to know absolutely everything there is to know about this vehicle, go and check out his video. It'll be linked in the top right with a little eye icon. But before we hit the road with this, I wanna invite you to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button if you like this video, and stay tuned for more awesome content like this. Your support helps us grow this channel. Now this convertible is configured with $138,000 as tested price, $120,000 in the States, and it comes very well equipped. 5 liter supercharged V8 engine producing 575 horsepower with 516 pound feet of torque. Excellent numbers from this engine. And it sounds fantastic as we'll be talking about. This is finished in the Giola green with the tan Windsor leather. <laughs> And that, my friends, is what Jaguar says is 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. So we're not going to be talking too much about this tech and specs and all that because James just did it. Victor and I are going to be having some fun with this car. So let's hit the road and see what the Jaguar F-Type convertible is all about. All right, folks, it's uh, four degrees outside, apparently. Roof is off, which should be anytime you have a convertible, really, you got to maximize every single moment you can if you've got a convertible. And I, I wish I could have done a little bit more this week, but that's fine. I want to talk about a couple things before we really get into the fun stuff when it comes to this video. I just want to talk about one major thing that James could not cover when he featured this vehicle, and it's how a big guy can fit in it. Truthfully, I was really, really worried I could not fit in this vehicle. When I was editing James's, I'm just looking at the interior. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to fit. Luckily, I do. I'm huge. I, I don't shy about it. You know, I talk about it all the time. So for me, I actually do fit, even with the roof up. I do find though that where I'm seated right now, the roof line is kind of right where I need to be looking. So traffic lights are kind of hard to see, but that ends up being the case with pretty much every convertible I drive. So with the roof up, I'm comfortable enough for this type of vehicle. Is this a good car if you're humongous? No, but you know, kudos to you if you buy one and you look like me, then uh, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna fit. Is it super comfortable? I don't know. I mean, like the seat bolstering, you know, feels like any other car that's got heavy bolstering. Like I am quite snug in the seat, but I'm just glad that I was able to actually fit in this car. So if you're curious, there's your answer. Fat guys do fit in this car. Now, I mentioned that we're going to really just have some fun with it. And it's true we will, because, you know, what can you say about this car that hasn't been said either by James or just by looking at it? I mean, this car on paper is kind of a strange offering right all-wheel drive supercharged v8 engine it goes like stink but the interior is kind of dated right i mean we've got an older style jaguar steering wheel infotainment system is like previous generation but none of that really matters who cares because if you're driving this car it's because you want something different you want something special there's not too many roadsters left on the market you know something like a mercedes amg gt you know, you could compare this to uh, not really a BMW Z4. You know, we drove the M40i when we had it a couple years ago. I mean, like, that's a small convertible. So Mercedes AMG GT, that, that's kind of it. There's not too much else out there. If you're looking for that, or, you know, Aston Martins, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, things like that, like supercar level stuff. So if your budget's like 140K Canadian, then, you know, this is a good option. And it really is a great option. I've had so much fun with it because, you know, James May is somebody who says that fast cars aren't always the most fun. The slow cars that that have kind of that performance to it can be fun too. Now this is a fast car, but you don't have to drive it fast to enjoy it. Like there, I'm going, you know, the speed limit. That just sounds so good though. As I shift up the gears, I've got the car in sport mode. I've got the transmission in sport mode. I've got the exhaust open up. I always got to turn off the auto stop start system. It's silly that that doesn't get disabled automatically. 
but you know you don't have to drive this car zero to 60 pedal to the metal every single second that you're driving it you can enjoy this car in a relatively tame experience right a little downshifts like this Ooh. can blip the exhaust yeah i mean it just sounds great but you've got the performance when you want it oh oh ho oh, oh. man oh man like, I don't even know if you can hear me because there's, there's so much wind coming into the vehicle. The exhaust sounds fantastic. I love it. Oh, you know, James, when he had this vehicle, he was telling me, you know, he's texting me, he's saying, Matt, when you drive this car, you're gonna understand it. And I absolutely did. I understood it last week when I drove the Jaguar F-Pace, the SUV, but I understand it even more now, now that I'm driving this. 575 horsepower, eight-speed ZF automatic transmission. I mean, I'm not a big manual guy. I don't care. I'm the weirdest auto, auto journalist you're ever gonna find. I have people that make fun of me about it. I don't care. You know why? Because this car is hella fun, and this is one of the best transmissions money can buy. Fight me on it. I don't care. So I just, I love slapping these gears in. The transmission is very quick. If I shift down, it's right away. Oh, ho, ho, ho. like how can you not enjoy that? Now, we're on winter tires. So we're not doing too much like heavy performance stuff with this car. Oh, ah, I mean, that's all you need. But I, I'll tell you, like I said, you don't need to drive the car fast. So if you go down to 40 kilometers an hour and you just enjoy it, you know, you got a little grumble in the exhaust, you got a little blurble as you're putting the throttle down a little bit, and that's all you need. Does the car feel like it can take those corners at 100 kilometers an hour? No, the, the chassis is pretty not flimsy but like i do feel that it's like some body roll obviously we don't have a roof so i'm sure if you got the coupe it would feel a little stiffer but i mean i don't have a hundred percent confidence in this vehicle mostly because of the winter tires and even in snow they didn't perform that great these are pirelli scorpion zero winter tires some of the best tires you can get but i don't know maybe just because I kept it in sport mode the whole time. Like there is a wet mode, a wet and snow mode on here, which I did use a little bit, but you know, for the most part, <laughs> you're gonna buy this car, you're gonna keep it in sport mode the whole time. And that's how I've enjoyed it. Every single day I've gotten into it. Even with the roof up, even when it's been super cold out, I'll still push the start stop button, put the car into sport mode, then put my foot on the brake and start it up because that initial startup sound is worth $140,000. I love it. I mean, I just can't get enough of it. And yeah, it doesn't make sense on paper. Like I said, this isn't a car that you're going to buy because it makes sense financially or it makes sense logically. You don't buy a Jaguar F-Type for that. You buy it because it gives you an emotional response when you drive the vehicle. And that's exactly what this car does. So it's a win. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't complain about a car like this. There really is nothing to complain about. You know, who cares about the infotainment being dated? You know, the exterior look is what's important. It looks so good. This color is great. The interior color is great. The seating, even though I'm huge and I'm not the most comfortable in this, compared to other convertibles like this, other roadsters, other sport vehicles, I am comfortable in the seats. There's nothing to complain about when it comes to this vehicle. And it really is a shame if they're gonna be getting rid of it. But you know what? Would I wanna drive a Jaguar F-Pace with a three liter straight six engine in it or a two liter turbocharged twin turbo four cylinder? Absolutely not. You know, we talked about this a couple months ago, back at, uh, what was it, like October, when we were doing our tribute to the Kia Stinger. And we said that that vehicle needed to die. And because it did, you know, it lasted for a couple of years, it did what it needed to do, and that was it. Same thing with this. I don't think Jaguar should keep this vehicle around just to have an F-Type, even with a smaller engine or some sort of electrification. Kill it off now, come out with something else that isn't a direct successor to this, and let this just exist as the final statement of raw, uninterrupted beauty, power, and performance. That's how it should be. All good things need to come to an end. And that's what this will be doing very, very soon because there is no plans for 2025 for this. So if you're in the market for an F-Type, you better get your orders in now. 
because they will sell because I'm telling you like I have seen one of these on the road in the last six months I wish I saw more of them you'll never see them out here that's for sure but god have I loved my time with this vehicle and you will too if you buy one I mean just absolutely the most aggressive sounding exhaust I've had on a vehicle nothing quite feels like a V8 especially a supercharged V8 and I'll give you one last taste here as we rip it up oh it just sounds so good oh man and again I'm not going crazy over the speed limit I'm hitting the speed limit and then that's it but it's just right at that 3500 rpm it just goes into insane mode because listen we're at 3000 35. oh i love it i love it anyway let's let victor have a run in this because i'm going to run out of gas if i just keep driving like this it's going to cost me too much so let's see what victor has to say about the jaguar f-type oh my god God, that was great. All right, I'm in the Jaguar F-Type convertible. This is the one with the V8 supercharge. Oh my God. The sound, the sound this thing makes is just I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm just gonna have lots of fun listening to the engine. Now, today the weather is not great. It's very cold, so we're not gonna be able to open up the roof. To hear even more of this beautiful V8 exhaust notes, but we'll insert some clips. We're definitely mounting a camera outside near the exhaust to show you what it sounds like. If you get the convertible, you'll hear all the glory from this V8. It definitely slides the back out and is super fun. I mean, I don't even have to go fast. It's, it's all about the sound. I'm, I'm cruising at 60, 65. And when I hear that exhaust, in 2024, you can't get this experience anywhere else. The, the Challenger is no more, so you, the, the supercharged, you know, 6.2 engine is gone. Everyone else is doing turbos, if not less cylinders. This is the last of its kind, really. I'm speechless. I mean, don't worry about the reliability. Don't worry about the resale value. Don't worry about any of that. It's all about the smiles per gallon. Don't worry about the fuel economy. You're never gonna get great fuel economy in this, but it's the smiles per gallon, right? It's, it's smiles per miles. It's, you know, the entire time I've been in this car, I've had a smile on my face and is it the most sporty? Is it is it gonna destroy everyone on a, on a straight line? No, is it, is it gonna be super fast on the track? No. Does it look freaking awesome? Yeah, heck yeah. I mean, it's one of the best looking sports coupe ever. I think it's one of the best looking. I think maybe the older Aston Martins beat this, but this looks freaking good. I must admit that I think the coupe version, the coupe version looks a bit better than the convertible. But if you want the full experience from this V8, you have to get the convertible and put the top down. Otherwise, the exhaust is a little bit more muted.
as you can see around us, there's a lot of snow. And you know what that reminds me of? I feel like I'm the villain from James Bond, from Die Another Day. You know, that scene where the Jaguar convertible is racing and shooting down the Aston Martin. All I'm missing is a couple diamonds on my face. That's it, and I'll be the villain. I feel super cool right now. The, the sound, I'm getting looks from left, right, and center. Not really because I wanna disrupt this quiet neighborhood, but inherently this V8 just does it on its own. My God. There's a lot of things that this car might not do very, very well. It's a bit bumpy, you know. Uh, the reliability is questionable at times. Jaguar products. It's a little loud on the road noise side. But... Who cares? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Oh my goodness. This, this V8, this supercharger, you can hear the whine if you rev it out. And this exhaust, the all-wheel drive system, just creates such a good sort of combination that I don't really care about all the other cars. It looks better than the SL63. I think it's almost Aston Martin territory, I think, for half the price. You should get one. You should get one before they all sell out because this is the last of its kind. There are no V8 supercharged Jaguars ever again. Anyway, 